Okay, so let's get started. One of the most important questions when you're starting any kind of content strategy, particularly a visual content strategy, since there's so many moving parts involved, is why? Let's talk about your visual content strategy. If you came here and you said, oh, visual content strategy, oh, infographics. That's a natural thing, but that's a tactic, right? An infographic is a tactic that feeds up to a strategy. What we wanna do is elevate it up one level higher and think about the strategy that's going to feed your infographics or anything else that's gonna go on your site. You see what's on your website, everything, all the graphics, all of the words, text is visual. It's all visual and you have to control that. And as a content strategist, you have the ability to control that if you start with the right plan. But let's start with why. Why is the most important question that you need to ask every time you're about to create a new asset? Because assets are expensive to create, and they're expensive to share, and they're expensive to maintain, and they're expensive to measure. The idea that digital is free is really old. You have a ma massive infrastructure that's required to maintain all of your content. So you have to ask, why are you here? And that's a big important question. Why are you here in this world on your website and what service do you provide? So I mentioned infographics. The problem with visual content strategies, everybody goes to infographics. They're the best and worst thing to happen to marketing. Because everybody thinks, oh, well, we'll create infographics. And what do infographics look like? Other infographics. Because one person started off with this idea to create an infographic and illustrator, and then everybody matches the same aesthetic. What we end up with is a sea of infographics that look like other infographics without the basic contextual answer of why are we making this. See, infographics can work. And this is when I talk about storytelling. This is a, a, a Superman infographic. So in the world of comic book fans, to get a Superman infographic from DC reminds them why they loved Superman. But with a Superman versus Batman movie coming out soon, now they're starting to seed the audience and remind them why they love Superman. They're trying to both get the sales of the Superman comic up and they're trying to make sure that people are planning to go see that Superman movie. So by seeding this infographic, they are answering the question, why? The why behind this? Because we're trying to remind fans that we're out there. Now, not everybody has a fan base the way comic book creators have, especially DC Comics and Marvel Comics. How does it apply to you? Maybe in a B2B world or in a B2C world, how can you take some of these learnings and move it along so that it works for your team? First, to remember, Story is not an autobiography of your brand. At the end of PNR, at every episode with Robert Rose and, and Joe Polizzi, if you guys don't listen to this weekly podcast, you definitely should. At the end, Robert Rose says, it's your story, tell it well. Now, a lot of people maybe think that that's about an autobiography, but it's not about an autobiography. Your story is contextual to their story. You see, it's all about your customer. And if you make it about you, you're gonna be seeding infographics that are really self-centered. As marketers, we're the worst party guests because it's all about us. It's me, me, me. Let me tell you about me. Especially if we have a brand message for June, it's gonna be about what I need to say at you in June. We talk at people, right? Conversation is talking with. And the most important thing when you're telling a story, when you're creating comics, creating a website, is contextually know your audience. What does your audience care about? If you're just talking at people randomly, you're gonna disconnect from them. So what you have to think about, if we go back to the basic example of storytelling, conflict equals story. Conflict equals story. This is one of the basic things that they teach you as a comic book writer. Without conflict, story is just set up, right? It's, it's, just, it's just a bunch of things happening until your hero or protagonist or whatever reaches a conflict point. Let's just talk about this for one second. And I think this is really important for us to talk about because so many of the presentations talked about story, and I put that in air quotes, because it's not really about story. They think it's about, well, you're gonna tell a story. Well, where's the story? Here's the story. User journey. A user, you guys, are going on a user journey. You wanted to come to this conference, and except for just a very small portion of you, all of you had to get here. That's a conflict. How do I get there? Right? You could take a train, you could take a plane, you could take a bus, you could drive. There's any number of ways to get here. Your conflict was how do I get here? It's the user journey, which is you're going along, I'm learning, I'm doing my job, and the conflict point is, oh, my boss said okay to the con. Oh, well, how do I get there? 
what they need, what you need. That begins a story, the narrative, where a brand can come in. So the brand comes in and says, well, we take people places, right? We're, we're an airline. I took Air United Airlines. They're like, hey, we, we go there. Now, United Airlines does a couple hundred flights a day. I only needed one flight. And I needed to know if their flight would get me to Las Vegas when I needed to and get me out when I needed to. That's where our story started to intersect. They solved the conflict in my story. I don't care when United Airlines was established or how many planes they have in the fleet or even what good deeds they do for associations and orgs all over the planet. What I needed to do was get to Las Vegas. So my story had some sort of conflict and they solved that conflict. You see, content is a variable. And we often forget that our job is to fill in that variable. But we often fail to ask the basic questions. Forget why. It's who, what, where, why, when, and how. If this sounds familiar for those of you who went to school and studied journalism, it's the inverted pyramid. You answer the question of who, what, where, why, when, and how in that first paragraph in what we call your lead. And if you answer that question, now you know what content you're creating and why. Many of you have probably heard many content marketing stories of people who have created this wonderful content and often you think to yourself, how does this tie back to the business? How does this make a customer want to buy stuff? And often it's a little sketchy and a little blurry about is it actually going to help the customer? Does it fit into their narrative? If you go in, and this is not just for visual content, it's all content, and answer these questions, you're much further along to helping your customer solve their own journey. So as we start to think about why are we creating it, think about the other ways that they will consume it. And to be honest, they don't need all of your content. You know a lot of stuff about your brand. Often somebody just wants one thing to know if it solves their, their problem, right? United Airlines can tell me any number of things about United Airlines. I only cared about the one that mattered to me. And it's the same way with your visual content and your written content. Putting the right content in front of people in the right format is really difficult because it's a it's a distillation process, it's reductive. It's about creating the content that matters to your user.